Hi, it's your favourite neighbourhood grouch yet again. The right love to stoke culture wars to divide society, as it's easier to control a divided populace than it is a more cohesive one. In the UK, the Tories have made the politics of division an art form, chipping away at every fault line between various demographics and culminating in the last remaining fault line between the pro and anti-European Union groups with the EU referendum. Sadly, this final fault line has had a devastating effect on the UK and one that I suspect may never truly be healed. The left, however, are just as guilty in dividing society with its obsession with championing the rights of ever smaller groups of people. Each group has been conditioned to compete for a voice, for representation and for the rights they deserve. And while these smaller battles are being fought, the left has taken its eye off the ball and allowed a watering down or abolition of the basic human rights which underpin the rights of those smaller demographics. The politics of division has to stop if the human race is to progress and for society to work for the good of all. Hey, didn't you just post a video about disabled rights? I hear my regular viewer ask. And yes, I did. But I didn't like having to do so or having to buy into the politics of division that I dislike. However, for now, I have to work within the system that's been built for us to operate in. It doesn't mean I approve of it. The Human Rights Act 1998 covers many of the issues that the smaller demographics are fighting to ensure their communities get, but rather than fighting for the rights of individual demographics, surely a mo more cohesive strategy will be to fight for basic human rights. Yes, we may need to add additional codicils to the basic articles or add protocols to widen the scope of human rights not already included, but that can be done without dividing the human race into groups. The articles of the Human Rights Act 1998 are as follows. Article 2, right to life. Article 3, freedom from torture and inhuman or degrading treatment. Article 4, freedom from slavery or forced labour. Article 5, the right to liberty and security. Article 6, the right to a fair trial. Article 7, no punishment without law. Article 8, respect for your, pri uh, for your private and family life, home and correspondence. Article 9, freedom of thought, belief and religion. Article 10, freedom of expression. Article 11, freedom of assembly and association. Article 12, the right to marry and start a family. Article 14. Protection from discrimination in respect of these rights and freedoms. Now you may have noticed that Articles 1 and 13 seem to be missing from that list. They don't have to because by creating the Human Rights Act, the UK fulfilled those rights. For example, Article 1 says that States must secure the rights of the Convention in their own jurisdiction. The Human Rights Act is the way of doing that in the UK. Article 13 makes sure that if people's rights are violated, they are able to effectively access a remedy to that. That means they can take their case to court and seek a judgment. And the Human Rights Act is designed to make sure that happens. So to have those in the actual act is kind of redundant. Human rights treaties, however, are often followed by optional protocols. These are extra provisions that have been written after the treaty was adopted. These protocols can be used to expand upon the obligations in the original treaty or address new and emerging concerns which a treaty doesn't cover. Some of the optional protocols in the Human Rights Act 1998 include Protocol 1, Article 1, the right to peaceful enjoyment of your property. Protocol 1, Article 2, the right to education. 
Protocol 1, Article 3, right to participate in free elections. And Protocol 13, where the others have gone, I don't know. Article 1, abolition of the death penalty. And just for information for the anti-Europeans out there, the articles in the Human Rights Act 1998 come direct from the European Convention on Human Rights, one of the originators of which was Winston Churchill. A convention that the Tories, the current Tories at least, wish to scrap, allowing them to build a Human Rights Act that is more conducive to their hideous policies. The Articles and Protocols of the Human Rights Act 1998 cover most of the rights that the various demographics want enshrined in law. And all that's needed is the addition of a few codicils and optional protocols to cover any gaps in the current legislation. And then all that's needed is a concerted and combined effort to fight for those rights to be upheld for everyone. All we need to do is accept every individual's common humanity and fight for those human rights as a cohesive unit. Rights are not rights unless they apply equally to every human being. Why can't the human race do one thing as an entire group and defend our human rights?